Hello world, it's Austin. Let's talk about being transgender and Christian. I want to tell you two short stories this week. It's going to be kind of like those uh, old Highlights magazine pictures where you have to find the differences in the two pictures side by side, except for we're going to be finding the similarities. This first story is about me coming to understand my transgender identity, and you might hear little echoes of your story in it too. This is the story of somebody who thought they were going to live one kind of life and who ended up living a completely different kind of life because of a call. I remember the first time I saw a transgender person, or the first time that I knew I saw a transgender person. I was probably 21 or 22, and I was goofing around on YouTube one night, and I found a video by Skylar Kurgil. Uh, a lot of you might know Sky. He's a trans guy who's been uh, documenting his transition for like the past eight or nine years. And I remember exactly how I felt when I started watching his videos. My first reaction was curiosity. Like, what? What does this mean? What does transgender mean? What What's happening here? Then I had this huge moment of recognition. Like when you're walking in a crowd and you see somebody that you kind of think you know, but somehow that knowing was directed at myself. It was like a lightning bolt. It was like recognizing that you're looking in a mirror and seeing yourself when you thought you were looking through a window. The next moment, I was sick to my stomach. I was so scared. Scared of that sense of recognition, and scared of what would happen if anybody ever found out that I had had this moment. Scared about what all of this could mean. I shut my laptop, and I totally ignored that that had ever happened, and I didn't look up anything about trans people for a long time afterward. When I did finally start looking things up again, it was because I realized that this needling, this thing that was just pushing at me, was not going away. I read more about trans people and what transgender identity was and what gender identity was, and I learned a lot of things that were really helpful, but I also learned a lot of things that were really scary. It scared me how many parents kick their trans kids out of the house and how many trans folks live below the poverty line. It scared me that folks who are visibly trans are at risk for becoming victims of hate crimes and violence, and it scared me that all of our Christian churches seem to be making that worse, not standing up for trans folks, but making things worse for them. Being trans did not seem like a great life. It seemed dangerous and hard. I remember making a lot of excuses so that I wouldn't have to deal with this. I remember thinking, why me? I'm just a regular person, right? I remember thinking, how do I even know if I really am trans? I remember thinking, even if I am trans, how the heck am I going to get anyone to believe me? And I remember thinking, I have no idea how I'm going to explain this. I also remember spending a lot of time asking if God would just Please let me out of this one. Just give me this one pass. Just let me out of this. Well, surprise, surprise, God didn't. Eventually I came to accept and understand my trans identity, and I came to understand that living as a trans person is not all dark, dangerous, terrible things. Sure, there's danger and there are difficult things, but that is not all there is. And no matter what, even as I'm going through some of these difficult things, God is with me. Knowing that God was going to be with me regardless changed the whole journey. So let me tell you another short story. This is the story of somebody who thought they were going to have one kind of life and who ended up having a completely different kind of life because they experienced a call. This is part of the story of Moses. So one day Moses is out shepherding his family's flock and he's walking down a hill and suddenly out of the corner of his eye he sees something weird. He gets a good look at it and realizes that it's a small tree that's on fire, but the tree's not burning up and the fire's not going out. And his first reaction is curiosity. He says, I must turn aside and go see this thing. So he gets closer and he hears a voice calling his name saying, Moses, Moses. And he says, here I am. And there's something weirdly familiar about that voice. There's something in that voice that Moses recognizes, like his body and his heart recognizes and responds to something before his brain can get in the way. Stop, the voice says, come no closer. I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob and suddenly Moses is terrified. He's terrified of the fire that won't go out and the voice that sounds so familiar and the fact that this is all happening and he can't ignore it and Moses hides his face. And then God begins to talk and God tells Moses that he has been chosen to go proclaim freedom and be a liberator for the people that he was born into, the people who are groaning and crying out in Egypt. And Moses says, why me? I'm just a regular person. And God says, don't worry, I will be with you. So then Moses says, how do I even know that this is true? How do I even know that you are who you say you are? And God gives Moses God's true name to carry back to the Israelites. 
So Moses tries again. Okay, but how am I going to get anybody to believe me? Nobody is going to believe this. And so God gives Moses three wonders, three supernatural signs that Moses can show the Israelites and the Egyptians. Desperately now, Moses says, God, I am not good at speaking. I don't know how to explain this. I have no words for this. God says, go. I will be with your mouth and I will teach you what to speak. Finally, Moses is basically reduced to begging and he says, please, God, don't make me do this. Choose somebody else. Don't make me face this thing. Don't make me become this person that you want me to be. But God doesn't let up. God asks Moses to walk forward anyway, to walk into a possibly difficult and dangerous future. So do those two stories sound a little bit similar? One thing that's definitely different is that when we are asked to go do something, God generally doesn't give us really cool signs. We can't, uh, you know, we don't see any burning bushes and we can't turn staffs into snakes, which is probably for the best when you think about it. What God did do for Moses and does do for us though, is send people to walk with us. God sent Moses, his brother Aaron, and eventually his sister Miriam, and they helped him to guide the Israelites. Oftentimes, when we're faced with a really difficult realization, God sends us people to walk with us and to help us sort of navigate through the fog. The most important thing God does, though, is to just go with Moses, and that's an important thing for us to remember when we deal with our own callings. God promises Moses, I will be with you, and promises us that same thing. Whether you're being called into a new sense of self or into a great work that you're not sure you can do, God is there. Moses didn't want to go from being an anonymous shepherd to God's chosen leader any more than I wanted to come out as transgender and possibly risk losing my friends and family. But when God calls you to come out, you go. So what's your burning bush moment? And what is God calling you to come out, to do, to be, to hear? What is that thing for you and how are you listening? So there are your stories for the week, friends. Um, I hope they give you some courage and some hope, things that we desperately need right now. So I hope you can pass that courage and hope on to other people in your lives. And if you want more information about being trans and Christian and what's going on with um, trans issues in the world and faith issues in the world, you can always subscribe to my newsletter. I'll put a little link down below. Uh, yeah, that's about it, everybody. I hope you're having a good week, and I will see you back here next month, first Wednesday of the month. All right, everybody. Peace.